Harry's wife. Part 89.10 Will they like me now? You can't have failed to have noticed, of course, the outcome in the Court of Appeal between Harry's wife and Associated Newspapers Limited. Many people are in high dudgeon, unable to accept or believe that a court could allow somebody to mislead it and do nothing more about it. Others recognise that Associated New Paper Limited has benefited, of course, from more sales, more clicks, exposing the behaviour of Harry's wife to demonstrate that she has told lies. Of course, this is fudged by her side by referring to it as being not a deliberate misleading of the court, but a memory lapse. Of course, many people thereafter see this as a two-tier justice system. They wonder if they were accused of something if they just said, oh, I just happened to forget whether they would be given the same level of leniency. It is, of course, important to understand and make the distinction between where evidence has been given and an individual has perjured themselves, where, in circumstances, evidence has been provided by the signing of a statement of truth, which has the caveat that it's true to the best of the knowledge and belief of the signatory. It is sometimes the case that a solicitor is authorised to sign this on behalf of their client. They will have advised their client as to the repercussions of authorising something when they know it not to be true. But of course, a court, unfortunately, is going to be slow to conclude that somebody has deliberately misled it by forgetting a number of emails that existed. That is the way that often the courts are. It has, of course, led other people to believe that the royal family has brought influence to bear upon the judiciary to bring about this outcome. Of course, there may yet be an appeal which goes to the Supreme Court, and the, the outcome, the judgment, may yet be overturned. But, of course, Associated Newspapers Limited has achieved many of its aims. First of all, it will have made plenty of money, far more than it will have to pay out with regard to the costs of Harry's wife and their own legal costs. Secondly, they have got into the public sphere, both during the court hearing and reportage thereafter, the fact that she misled the court through the omission of the emails and the failure to recognise, admit and confirm that there had been collaboration between her and Prince Harry and the authors of Finding Dollars, excuse me, Funding Freedom, <coughs> beg your pardon, Finding Freedom. Thirdly, it has turned the screws on her publicly Below the line comment sections, social media, YouTube comments and such like show time and time again her unpopularity, the repeated dislike of her as a consequence of all of her behaviours and, of course, the recent exposure of her as being a liar. She will, of course, reject that. She will just put it down to a memory lapse. Guided by her lawyers and also the blindness of her narcissism, she will believe that she simply forgot, and it was just an omission. The court of public opinion is not going to be as kind. Of course, this then begs the question, will her success in court change public opinion of her? And an article on the BBC by Sean Coughlin poses this question. Will Harry's wife's big win change public opinion? This has been a big win for the Duchess of Sussex, as the appeal court has upheld her claim against the Mail on Sunday for publishing parts of a private letter to her father. It allows her to put down a strong marker over her privacy, and the slam-dunk ruling allows her to avoid any awkward cross-examination as a witness. Believe me, she would be an unimpressive witness, lacking the cognitive function and the higher involvement of her narcissism, Faced with forensic cross-examination by a competent silk, a QC, which is a particularly senior barrister for those of you who don't know, she would be exposed awfully. She would be tied up in knots. We might even see her 
bursting into tears on the witness stand or having a hissy fit. But for the moment, that isn't going to happen. Something, I dare say, that her legal team are breathing a huge sigh of relief over, and her PR advisers. Returning to the article, This is a victory not just for me, but for anyone who's ever felt scared to stand up for what is right, was Harry's wife's response after a win over a news industry that she says conditions people to be cruel. And if you want my observations on that sanctimonious statement, all you need do is look at part 89.7. The article states it's part press statement and part manifesto as she rails against a type of media that rewards chaos over truth. There might be some champagne cracked open in the Californian winter sunshine because Harry's wife's success vindicates a high-risk strategy. Previous generations of royals might have been horrified at the idea of having their private messages read out in a courtroom or being picked apart for embarrassing headlines in the witness box. But in this dispute about the publication of a letter from a daughter to a father, the judges focused on the letter of the law rather than other billowing issues about the royals and the media. The appeal court's confirmation that this had been a breach of the Duchess's privacy means that even if her life is inescapably of public interest, it doesn't make her public property, save, of course, when she chooses. But it's come with some bruising headlines. There was much publicity around her apology for not having remembered information briefed to authors writing a book about her and Prince Harry. The judges described this at, at best, an unfortunate lapse of memory. This might have been an uncomfortable insight, but it had no bearing on the fundamental issues of the privacy case. The newspaper's publisher, Associated Newspapers, says an appeal to the Supreme Court is being considered arguing that a judgment should only have been given on evidence tested at trial. The publisher, lacked, the publisher challenged the lack of cross-examination of evidence when it said issues had been raised about the credibility of the Duchess. And believe me, her credibility is in tatters, and anybody would have a field day cross-examining her. Rather than a breach of privacy, the publisher said its stories addressed issues of public interest surrounding the wedding of Prince Harry and Harry's wife. Harry's wife sharply divides opinion, and even with this legal win, that's likely to continue. Her supporters will see it as evidence that she really has been unfairly treated by a hostile press, while her detractors might continue to view the court case through the prism of a narcissistic attempt to control her image. Well done, Mr. Coughlin. You're getting there, identifying that her behaviour is viewed by many as narcissistic. But you're not quite there yet. It's not just narcissistic, it's because she's a narcissist. The article continues, social media will still be a snake pit on both sides. But the court case did shed some unexpected light on Prince Harry and Harry's wife's world in the months after their wedding in 2018, in the documents published alongside. <laughs> Emails, texts, and statements suggested a couple under siege. There was relentless press interest. Prince Harry was under significant pressure from his family about Thomas Markle talking to the media. Harry's wife had no secure means of communication with her father, and she worried about her mother's safety from egregious paps. She described her personal styling as being the only thing I seem to still have any control over. Delusion pity play. The exchanges between Harry's wife and her communications secretary, Jason Knorf, showed the extreme detail that went into planning her letter to her father, down to structuring the sentences so no page could be reproduced without showing it ran on to the next. Pausing there, it's important for people to understand that as a mid-range narcissist, she plans in the moment but she doesn't have an overarching view of the way that she does things. She certainly doesn't know that she seeks fuel control character traits and residual benefits. She's completely unaware of that. It manifests as other things in her mind because the narcissism presents it as other things. For instance, feeling that she's persecuted, believing that she actually is a very kind and helpful person, and those feelings and thoughts motivate her to seek out fuel control, etc., she is capable of engaging in planning in the moment that she is engaging with another person. 
but she doesn't have the type of narcissism which is repeatedly calculated, overarching, and looks into the future. This is why we see again and again the collateral consequences that come and metaphorically bite her on the backside. Returning to the article, the emails were also a reminder that this wasn't a usual PR relationship, with Harry's wife addressed as Hi, Ma'am. Prince Harry appeared in the email chains using a lot of exclamation marks, presumably because crayons would just be marking the screen when he tried at first to write an email that way, and sounded indignant and protective on his wife's behalf, his empathic nature being driven by his emotional thinking, warning of vile attacks and cyberbullying on a different scale, and wanting to get some truths out there. Harry's wife's iPhone email sign-off was, Please excuse all technological mishaps, I'm a Luddite. Again, false humility, and even as the article identifies, she comes across as highly focused and intensely self-aware about the modern media. That again is her attempt to look humble, and it doesn't wash. The courtroom battle will add another layer to Harry's wife's complicated relationship with the British public. What began as an enthusiastic welcome for a breath of fresh air changed into something like the way Yoko Ono was treated for supposedly breaking up the Beatles. The public has its own expectation of royals. They might not mind titles, but they bridle at entitlement. YouGov polling shows a slump in Harry's wife's popularity over the past year. In autumn 2020, 40% of people in this UK tracking survey had a positive opinion of her, but that had fallen to 28% in autumn 2021, with Prince Andrew the only royal with worse approval ratings. But when the UK poll is broken down into age groups, the Duchess of Sussex is one of the more popular royals for younger people. There's a chasm in attitudes towards Harry's wife, and it shows what an asset she could have been to a royal family needing more diversity and wanting to reach younger generations. Her more recent campaigns, such as lobbying over parental leave rights, sense of entitlement, facade management, might have connected with this socially aware generation. Instead, her claims, lies, in her Oprah interview about the royal family and the colour of the baby she was expecting, when she said there were comments about how dark his skin might be, have continued to fizzle like a sulphurous firework that won't go out. Harry's wife, now aged <coughs> 40 and a mother of two, looked relaxed and at home on the Ellen Chat Show circuit last month in a Californian TV studio with celeb-friendly questions, a long way from courts and courtiers. There could be a chance to write a new chapter, more on her own terms. It always has to be. But even though the privacy ruling will be a warning signal, the media and public interest in this famous couple is not going to go away. Moreover, if she thinks that this success is going to endear her to more people, it again underlines her sense of delusion. The immediate reactions demonstrate that people are disgusted with the outcome and... It just shows with the sanctimonious statement that was released and the behaviours surrounding all of this that more and more people see through. There's a change.org petition which has been launched for the purposes of encouraging Associated Newspapers Limited to pursue an appeal to the Supreme Court. Comment after comment after comment on news articles highlighted again and again and again. The public's disgust with the outcome, albeit many have misunderstood the way that the law works, but leaving that to one side and looking at it just in terms of popularity. The court case might have secured a win for her and will have allowed her to assert control through that judgment, but what it has meant is that as a consequence of the various collateral consequences, her popularity continues to plummet. And, once again, this will cause her to try and get an even further grip upon that aspect of control, carrying out more and more engagements, releasing more and more PR material, spending more and more money on trying so desperately to assert control by being liked. And, as I've mentioned before, this downward spiral will continue. She may ask, will they like me now? The evidence so far is a resounding no. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.